Hello and welcome back. In this section, we're going to be talking about use case modeling. This video particularly is going to be focused on use case diagrams, which is a part of use case modeling. As presented in the design thinking mental model in the previous section, use case modeling is one of the most important techniques that we as software engineers have, which will help us in understanding the what of the system. Now, when we say use case modeling, it actually consists of two distinct parts, which is use cases themselves and a use case diagram. So hopefully this section will help us answer questions like what is the relationship between a use case diagram and a use case? What information do each of them provide? Or what are the point of views from which they answer our questions from? So let's start by defining what use cases and use case diagrams are, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty of their details in the rest of the part of this particular section. Let's start with the use case diagram. As you can see from the diagram presented on the slide, a use case diagram consists of three modeling elements, a system boundary, a list of actors, and a list of use cases. The rectangle that's shown around the use cases basically specifies the system boundary, or in another way to look at it, it specifies the scope of this particular application that one is trying to model. And the use cases themselves that are shown as ellipses or circles inside the system boundary talk about the functionality that this particular system is going to provide from an end user's perspective. And the end user's perspective are nothing but the actors. So actors typically are roles that people play or different people who use this particular system. And in cases can also be a different system or a different department which has some kind of an interaction with this particular system in order to achieve some particular business goal. So between use case diagrams and use case or use case specification, you will note that the use cases are actually the primary artifacts. But the use case diagram basically acts like a glue or it's this is the diagram that provides the big picture of what the system will provide for you from an end user's perspective. As I mentioned earlier, we will talk about use case or use case specification in the next, the next lecture. But we still need to understand what is the definition or what a use case is. So let's do that first. What I've actually shown on the slide is basically a common template that most companies use when it comes to writing, uh, writing down use case or use case specification. Again, depending on the company that you're working for, there might be slight variance in it, but most often they're not. These are the most common sections that you would one would expect to see if one were to write a use case specification document. It typically starts off with a unique identification and a name and should have a very well called out a business goal or a business purpose. It can actually list any number of actors and these are the actors who would take part in this particular use case and they actually also have some conditions to be met, conditions that have to be met before this use case could start and conditions that will be achieved once this particular use case is actually achieved. You would also note that you typically would have one main flow per use case, but it can actually you can actually end up having more than one alternate flows and or exception flows. But the idea being the main flow and the alternate flows are trying to achieve the goal or the purpose of for which this particular use case document or use case specification is returned towards. Now that we have looked at how a use case is written, let's see what a definition of a use case is. A use case is a description of possible sequence of interactions between the system that's being modeled and with X number of external actors related to a particular goal. That's one of the definitions that I like a lot. The second one that you see down below is the definition provided by Ivar Jacobson himself. And as many of you probably know, Ivar Jacobson is one of the three amigos who helped define this particular standard. That's the unified modeling language. Now, in the definition itself, I have highlighted three parts that I do consider as the most important uh, elements of what a use case is. So the three things that you should take away from this particular definition are these. A use case consists of a sequence of actions or a sequence of steps. A use case should always produce an observable result or another way of saying it would be a measurable business result 
and it's always written with respect to a particular actor or an external actor who uses this particular system. So the three things to take away from the use case definition are sequence of actions, measurable business result from a particular actor standpoint. Now that we've looked at what a use case is and what a use case diagram is, let's get into the details of how to write a use case diagram. Now, one of the most important parts of writing a use case diagram is the identification of the use, the use cases themselves. And that is an extremely important skill to have. So we're going to do this via an exercise. In this slide, I've presented a small part of the rental car agency domain problem. Yes, I do. I do realize that this can be an extremely large domain, but assume what is given on this screen is the only part of your requirements for which you need to solve this particular uh, exercise about. So for this given one page requirement or one slide requirement, I want you to take some time and identify the use cases based on what you actually see. This lecture ends on this particular slide. So take your time in writing down the list of use cases on a piece of paper. And once you're done with your exercise, you can continue with the next video.